You can find out if carbon dioxide is present by using a chemical called lime water. We showed you how to make lime water in a previous video. We want to show the presence of carbon dioxide in our breath. You will need a straw, lime water, two chest tubes and a funnel. Pour some lime water into each test tube. Take the straw and blow lightly into one of the test tubes. Do not suck. Watch the lime water. Take out the straw. Look at the difference. The lime water turns cloudy. This signifies that the carbon dioxide is present in your breath. As seen in the video, you'll find that initially the lime water, your 6.4 activity says that you prepare freshly lime water. Lime water means what? Calcium hydroxide which has been taken in water. So if it's a pure lime water, that will be colorless. Okay, it, is, it will be plain, transparent. Now, as shown in the figure, okay, as shown in the figure, you are blowing into it. Okay, you blow into it. When you blow into the lime water, you will find that after some time, this particular lime water will become cloudy. Okay, so why does it become cloudy over here? Yes, the reason is carbon dioxide is present in the exhaled air. Okay, so here the question is asking, what is present? What can you say about the amount of carbon dioxide? This is mentioned over here, isn't it? So, the carbon dioxide which is coming out from the air is making the water cloudy. One more activity is shown over here. It says that you prepare fruit juice or sugar solution and add some yeast to it and you have to... Uh, cover that particular test tube with a cork having one hole through which you are passing a tube okay a bent glass tube is passed bent glass tube when you are passing what happens through that glass tube the gas comes out and then what will happen it is passed into the lime water and here also the lime water's color will change so it shows that there is fermentation process now from here what is very clear children the process of uh, respiration is nothing but using oxygen to break down glucose completely into carbon dioxide and water. Now the most important question over here is, is it that complete glucose is always broken down into carbon dioxide and water? Well, it is not so. As it is seen over here, the respiration can take place in three different pathway okay so the first pathway which is given over here the first pathway is it breaks down the glucose which is a six carbon atom molecule why do you call it a six carbon atom you know because glucose is written as c6 h6 h12 sorry o6 okay c6 h12 i'll just correct it Yes, H12 and O6. So, since, since it is a 6 carbon atom compound, it is also sometimes referred to as hexose. Glucose is also called as hexose because it is a 6 carbon atom compound. This 6 carbon atom carbon, this 6 carbon atom compound is then converted into a 3 carbon atom molecule. And the name of that 3 carbon atom molecule is pyruvate. This pyruvate, this particular process of glucose that is 6 carbon converting into 3 carbon that is converting into pyruvate takes place in the cytoplasm and this particular conversion takes place in absence of oxygen here oxygen is not required okay there is no oxygen required so it is in absence of oxygen and this particular process this particular pyruvate is then further broken down in the same cytoplasm itself it is then further broken down into ethanol and carbon dioxide so that is called fermentation process so if the question on what is fermentation is asked or explain the breakdown of glucose 
by fermentation process is asked then your answer starts from here the process in which a 6 carbon atom the process in which a 6 carbon atom is converted into a 3 carbon atom molecule called pyruvate and further broken down into ethanol and carbon dioxide in absence of air that is definitely to be written huh? in absence of oxygen then it is called fermentation so this is the first step which you come across is that point clear first step of breakdown of glucose let us take up the next step what is the next step of breakdown of glucose the next process is the three carbon atom compound that is pyruvate can further break down into three molecules of carbon dioxide and water okay now this requires oxygen remember in the previous one i told you it doesn't require oxygen but this particular process of pyruvate converted into carbon dioxide and water requires oxygen and another important thing is this process takes place in mitochondria do you remember what is mitochondria yeah it is the mitochondria is a cell organelle which is found in the cytoplasm the pyruvate formation glucose to pyruvate formation takes place in the cytoplasm it doesn't require oxygen but pyruvate further converting into carbon dioxide and, uh, and water requires oxygen and that takes place in the mitochondria so two different places of uh, breakdown cytoplasm and mitochondria this part of the reaction is also called aerobic because oxygen is involved over here so first step which i explained that is anaerobic this will be aerobic is that point clear and therefore what happens since it is aerobic there will be tremendous amount of energy which is given out release of energy is tremendous more than many times more than the anaerobic is that point clear so these are the two main processes which takes place of breakdown of glucose number one the first process which i explained was first process which i explained was breakdown of glucose into uh, pyruvate okay and uh, breakdown of glucose i just write it again glucose is broken down into pyruvate okay glucose is broken down into pyruvate and that process takes place pyruvate this process takes place in absence of oxygen there is no oxygen over here in absence of oxygen it takes place in the cytoplasm and pyruvate is further broken down into uh, ethanol that is ethyl alcohol ethanol and carbon dioxide okay so this is one particular reaction but this takes place entirely in the cytoplasm but the next reaction which i explained just now the next reaction which you understood just now is where glucose is broken down into pyruvate of course and this reaction takes place in cytoplasm and it doesn't require oxygen it is in absence of oxygen but the next reaction is in presence of oxygen and that converts it into carbon dioxide and water and where does this part of the reaction takes place this part of the reaction takes place in the mitochondria okay the upper part of the first part of the reaction takes place in the cytoplasm this takes place in the mitochondria clear okay now there is a third pathway which is taking place and that third pathway is when there is lack of oxygen in the muscle cell our muscle cell means what human body okay in the human being generally we are aerobically surviving creature but in our body if there is a lack of oxygen then the breakdown of pyruvate takes place into lactic acid that is also a three carbon molecule so lactic acid keeps on building in our muscles due to which we have cramps what is the meaning of this cramp in your leg you feel as if your muscles are winding up or rounding up that is called the cramps that takes place because of lactic acid which is building up in your body is that point clear? and when you take rest at that time oxygen is available so lactic acid gets broken down into carbon dioxide and water and then your feeling of pain and tiredness disappears is that point clear so total three pathways the complete thing is summed up over here in the tabular form so first pathway which i told you is 
first method of breakdown is glucose in cytoplasm breaks into pyruvate and in absence of oxygen it will form ethanol carbon dioxide and energy is liberated second method is glucose breaks forms pyruvate and then in presence of oxygen it will form carbon dioxide water and energy this is aerobic and this is anaerobic clear first one is aerobic and second one is anaerobic sorry first one is anaerobic second one is aerobic clear till here and this particular method which i have been mentioned in between is the third pathway where the first part is anaerobic taking place in the cytoplasm the second part lack of oxygen in the muscle cell itself so that is also anaerobic but when the availability of oxygen is there it will break down it will come down into this particular pathway is that point clear or not so in exam if they ask you anaerobic reaction what part will you write you will say glucose 6 carbon atom breaking down into glucose 6 carbon atom will break down into pyruvate and then this part this full chain which you write okay this much which you are writing is called the anaerobic reaction clear along with that if they ask you in animal anaerobic reaction that is in the muscle cells if they ask you then you have to mention then you have to talk about this pathway is this point clear okay and if they ask you aerobic reaction then you have to talk about this pathway is this point clear till here all the three okay Achha. now let us continue further what will happen after the energy is liberated see energy is liberated in all the three cases am i right here energy 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 the energy in these two cases are lesser whereas here the energy will be more in aerobic it will be more correct now these energy which are liberated will be in the form of atp what is atp atp is adenosine triphosphate okay atp is adenosine triphosphate which is mentioned over here how is adenosine triphosphate formed when a phosphorus joins with adp that is adenosine diphosphate it will become triphosphate and the amount of energy which is liberated when the atp is breaking down the phosphate which is linked to it when it separates at that time this much amount of energy that is 30.5 kilojoules of energy is liberated per mole that is utilized by your body for performing functions is that point clear so your um, energy expenditure takes place which is utilized for various purposes of your body clear till here okay so we stop till here in the next video we'll take up further understanding okay thank you